Minister Dominello, thanks for joining us at CEO.com to talk about leadership in government and digital transformation. What was the spark to get you to dive so deep into digital transformation? Well, when I became Minister for Aboriginal Affairs in 2011, I remember in the first six months there was an emergency happening in one of the remote communities around a community challenge, for want of a better word. And what happened there is we had to get the, myself in the room, we had to get the Minister for Health in the room, the Minister for Family and Community Services in the room, the Minister for Police in the room, and all get around and say, how are we going to solve this problem for the community, which was really important. And the first thing uh, that the bureaucrats were telling me, the public senior public servants were telling me was, oh, look, we can give you some information, but uh, the data is about you know, three months old, six months old. And I said to them, how on earth do you want us to make decisions today that impacts their lives tomorrow based on information that is three, six months old. And, and it's gonna take you another six weeks to get me information. It's just crazy, it's not good enough. That frustration has stayed with me and I'll never forget it. And I said to the people at the time, you're asking us to go into an emergency room. Like if you have an accident, you go into a hospital. There's an emergency situation and you've got to make really big decisions. And in that emergency room, imagine saying to uh, the, your fellow doctors, oh, look, let's operate, but I'm happy just to rely on x-rays that are six months old. I'm happy to rely on MRIs that are two years old. Not good enough. As soon as you're in the emergency theatre, you're hooked up to every machine known to mankind, getting real-time information so you can make real-time decisions. That's what we need to do in, in the public sector. And that's how we're, we're moving, slowly or bit, but we're, we're moving. We're getting there, okay. How have others around you reacted to that change in the status quo of, of you demanding real-time information um, and being able to make decisions off that? Well, initially people thought I was crazy. Uh, people thought I was just on a, an adventure on my own. But even recently now, I think it's fair to say that the ministers around the cabinet table are now seeing that this is has to be part of the course. It's got to be the uh, the standard operating procedure from this point forward. Yeah. And do, do you have any um, approaches that you took to bring everyone uh, around you on that, that journey? Yes, uh, I show people the effect of it. So if I can show people in the palm of my hand through a mobile device, this is what I'm seeing and this is what I'm tracking and this is the outcome we're getting. Yeah then there's nothing more powerful than that. Yeah. So, so with that real-time information at, at your fingertips, what are some of the decisions that you can make now that you just wouldn't have been able to previously? Well, I actually love real-time feedback because if I can then track that real-time feedback and there is a consistent theme, for example, in relation to service delivery on a reform, mm. and the customers, or in my case, the citizens, are saying to me, we're not understanding a certain issue or we don't like the way this is being rolled out, I can then pick up the phone and say, look, this is tracking in a certain direction and it's been tracking this way for a number of hours, days, weeks. Let's change to respond to the citizens' needs. Yeah. So, Minister, how do you look at digital transformation in government? Well, I've got a lot of government experience now. I've been in the public life now for about 10 years and I've seen different governments around the world and how they apply uh, different theories around digital transformation. I've come up with about 10 points. The first thing, it's got to be data-based. Second D, it's got to be digital. Third D, it's got to be direct. The fourth D, it's got to be displayed, so we can see it. is a great tool for that. Fifth D, it's got to be dissected, I analysed. Sixth D, it's got to be part of your DNA. Seventh D, is it's got to be part of um, the future, i.e. the third dimension. And that's where we're moving towards in super exciting areas. Another D has got to be defence, uh, i.e. cyber security, we've got to lock that down. Another D is around uh, what we're doing in relation to what will happen if you don't do all these Ds, and that is you become a dinosaur. Yeah. And of course, the last D is delivery. And to be honest, that's the most important one because if you don't have delivery, then everything else is academic. So if we can deliver, then we can get outcomes. If we get outcomes, then we're serving our citizens. Yeah. So you mentioned DNA, and, and we see that the cultural aspect of, of change, particularly with information and the ability to react so fast, uh, is, is one of the biggest challenge, not necessarily the technology. Uh, how, how have you been able to address that cultural change in government? Without a question, cultural change is the hardest. You know, it's, it's easy to change your mind, it's much harder to change your heart. And you know, the DNA goes to the you know, matters of the heart, it's really changing the way you think and see the world. 
Uh, and the only way to do that, in, from my experience, is through really strong leadership. You need to continually be on the case for reform, for change. You need to constantly say, if we don't do this, then we get left behind in the 19th and 20th centuries. Yeah. So one of the key outcomes and one of the main areas you initially focused on was uh, CTP green slip efficiencies and, and areas to optimise that. Um, and that's been very successful with you know, a, a large number of people getting, getting refunds and, and a very high satisfaction rate. Well, what are some of the other areas that you're looking to, to dig into with, with data? Oh, well, there's a lot of opportunities, trust me. There are a lot of opportunities. Um, but one of the things I'm looking at is property DNA. So, you know, we're already tracking our own DNA. You can do that now for about $2,000. We're tracking, we're starting to map the, the human brain. Why can't we map uh, property? So, you know, the bricks, the mortar, the nails, the, uh, every element of the human, of the body or the property structure. So that way, when we have a Grenfell, you know, disaster, we can see exactly what property's got, what element, press a button and find out where they are. So this is where we need to start tracking in the future. Mm. And these are very forward thinking um, ideas. Um, how, how, how do you find just getting everyone to go, okay, yeah, that's, that's a fantastic idea. How do, we, how do we get that executed together? Well, I think a lot of it's to do with uh, passion. If you're passionate about something, then that's quite infectious and people can see that. And if you've got a vision uh, then, and you're passionate, then a lot of people will join you on that journey. And then if you can demonstrate it again, uh, I think it's easy to get people along. Yeah. So you started off in the private sector and then moved into to government. Do you see any areas where both can learn off each other? Oh, there's always areas to learn. Like the, the government is like a tank. It's big, it's ugly, it's slow, uh, and it's very, very hard to navigate. Uh, but it is very powerful. The private sector is much more agile. You know, it's super sexy. It's, it's, it's fun to be in. Um, there's a lot though that can be shared, but there's a lot in common. So there are great uh, elements in the private sector uh, that are forward thinking and they move very fast. But there's also uh, elements in government, uh, in some of my agencies that are forward thinking and move fast. But I think there's a lot that we can learn off each other. Yeah. So to, to move a little bit to personal data um, and leadership, how, how have you measured success for yourself over the course of your career? Well, impact. I, I want to know whether I've moved the dial. Uh, and you know, can I measure that and can I see it? And if I can see it, then I know that I've made a positive difference. Right. And, and so what, what data do you need now to do your job well? Well, the most important data for me yeah. uh, as a minister is making sure that my citizens are happy. Yeah. So that's the first thing I look at at the dashboard. Uh, what's the citizen satisfaction rate in relation to all the products and policies we're rolling out? Because okay. if the citizen's happy, then I'm happy. Yeah. So to continue the leadership theme, how, how do you know when uh, an idea is worth investing you know, your time and energy and, and those around you in? Well, I look for impact. There's lots of ideas. Uh, can, you, you know, can the idea generate a positive impact? And more importantly, how quickly can you measure that and track it? Because what happens in government is you tend to have a great idea, nobody really measures it uh, until right at the end when there's an independent audit and you see a train wreck report. So measuring that impact is important. Well, what's the biggest opportunity you see that perhaps the business leaders aren't jumping on at the moment? I think embracing real-time information, like things move so fast, absolutely so fast, and things change. So getting real-time information, when I say real-time, like every 15 minutes, um, not every week, not every month, every, every minute if you can. That's, that's where the cutting edge is. Yeah, you do see it as a, a big cultural change for people. Oh, it's a huge cultural yeah. shift, huge. Yeah. What other leaders do you admire and who should we be paying attention to? Oh, there's a number. Uh, in the political setting, I, I really admire uh, Modi from India. He's Because he thinks big, big picture and he's got a huge vision, not just for India, but for the world. And yet he simplifies those ideas into real basic concepts, so I think that's really uh, really a great quality. In, in terms of the business community, Jack Ma, love what he does, particularly uh, how he's forward thinking, the amount of uh, money he puts back into R&D, uh, his digital vision is really, really impressive. Yeah. Um, what, what's your favourite business book or leadership book? Um, favourite leadership book uh, would be probably 
the outliers. Again, it's about change. Yeah. Uh, and another book in, in the series is The Tipping Point. You know, yeah. how, how do you get change? Where is a change point, the tipping point? You know, I'm in public life because I want to make a change. Yeah, yeah, which is, uh, which is fantastic. So, so in that, what, what, what is next for you? In terms of? Of um, your career and <laughs> what you're doing with government and... Uh, well, we have an election in 199 days, so subject to the good graces of the people. Uh, yeah, continue this digital journey. I don't want to just change gears, I want to change dimension. So in many ways, we're leading the country in terms of the digital transformation, but we've just started. And uh, the, the ideas that we're starting to work through now are super exciting. I want to roll those out, hopefully, in the years ahead. Mm. Yeah, well, based on what I've seen, and, and certainly I, I meet with a lot of executives, you know, what you're doing is very forethinking and, uh, and, and strategic, and, and I look to forward to seeing, as a constituent of New South Wales, uh, more success in that regard. So thank you very much for spending time with us today. Oh, thanks, Paul. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Cheers.